In this video, we'll see some visualizations of a plane cutting a cone to get conic sections. Yes, that's where the name comes from. When we make a plane cut a cone, the sections that we get are called conic sections. We'll look at parabola, ellipse, hyperbola, straight lines, and also the circle. But first, let's talk about the cone. What exactly is a cone? So this is what the cone looks like in 3D. This is what we'll slice. Okay, so this is our cone. It has two parts, the upper nap and the lower nap. Let's get a few technical terms out of the way. So this is not just any cone. This is a double napped right circular hollow cone that extends indefinitely in both directions. Let's go through this word by word. So we can see that this is a cone, but this is double napped, which means this has two sides, this one and this one. It's right circular hollow cone. This is hollow. This is circular. The base is circular and it's right, which means it's perpendicular to the axis. It also extends indefinitely in both directions. Now what you might see is just a slice of this cone, but in reality, this cone extends indefinitely in both directions. It keeps extending in this direction as well as this direction. Now another point, how do we make this cone? We take a fixed point and we have an axis and we take another line that's called the generator. So this line is called the generator. We tilt it, let this angle be alpha. So this generator is at an angle alpha with this line and then we rotate it in 3D. So when this line rotates, what we actually get, the surface that we get is called this cone. It's a double napped right circular hollow cone. Now because this line, the generator also extends indefinitely, we also see that this cone extends indefinitely in both directions. All right, now that we're familiar with the cone, time to slice it with planes. Let's make the first slice. Okay. So this is our plane and we slice it. Let's see what we get. So the section that this plane makes with this cone is called a circle. You can see that wherever it cuts, it's a circle. So this is a circle. And if you have to measure the angle that this plane makes with this axis, that's 90 degree. It's perpendicular to the axis. So the angle that this plane makes, let's call this beta. In this case, it's 90 degrees. So whenever the plane cuts this cone at an angle of 90 degrees, we'll get a circle. Let's move on. Let's look at other cones. Let's look at this one. Okay. Now this plane is inclined. Now we no longer get a circle. We get something else. What do we see? We see something oval and technical term for this is called an ellipse. So this is an ellipse. And how do we define an ellipse using the angle that this plane makes? Well, if you look closely, this angle is less than 90, but it's more than alpha. The plane makes an angle more than alpha, but less than 90 for the ellipse. Now you might be wondering what happens when this angle beta is less than alpha. That's the conic section that we'll see next. So let's make this angle beta less than alpha. Now this plane makes an angle beta that's less than alpha. What do we get? This is called a hyperbola. This has two branches, one on this side and the other one on this side. So this, what we get is called a hyperbola. For a hyperbola, the plane has to make an angle beta that's less than alpha. It can be zero as well. Imagine a plane making an angle zero with the axis. This means the axis is lying on the plane. What we get is still a hyperbola. So this is how we get a hyperbola. Again, you might be wondering what happens if this angle is exactly equal to alpha. Let's see that in action. What happens if we cut a plane, which is inclined at the exact same angle as this cone? So let's see that. Here's our plane making the exact same angle. This is what we get. Can you recall what this is? Yep, this is called a parabola. Now either you can get the parabola on this snap or you get the parabola on this snap. You can only get that on one of these. This is the parabola and this is also a parabola. You only get the parabola when this plane makes an angle alpha, which is exactly same as the cone. So you get the parabola when beta is equal to alpha. So we have covered parabola, hyperbola, ellipse and circle. But then there are more conic sections. There are special cases when the plane passes through the vertex. So for the next few sections, we'll keep this plane passing through the vertex. 
So let's see what we have in the first one. Okay, let's tell this. What do we get? And you might say we get nothing, but it's still intersecting. We get the point. When the plane cuts the vertex at an angle between 90 and alpha, we get a point. So when the beta is between alpha and 90, what we get is also a conic section. It's called a point. So what do we get when the angle beta is exactly same as alpha? So this plane passes through the vertex and it also touches this side. So what we get is a straight line. In fact, this line is the generator for this cone. So we get the generator when this angle is exactly equal to alpha. So what we get is a straight line and that's also a conic section. Now what happens when this beta is less than alpha? If we keep the plane passing through the vertex and reduce the angle, this is what we get. Let's see this in action. If we reduce the angle, okay. Notice something? What we get is called a pair of straight lines. These are intersecting lines. Okay, so this is what we get. Even if the angle is zero, we get a pair of straight lines. So when the plane cuts the vertex at an angle of beta, which is between alpha and zero, we get a pair of straight lines. So we have covered all types of conic sections from point to line to pair of straight lines, and then circle, ellipse, parabola, and hyperbola. Now, because these are slices that this plane makes on this cone, that's why they're called conic sections.